Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Laura Jackson. And I'm Amanda Quinn. And if you could see me, if, well, if you're listening to this, you can't see my weirdo top knot, which is slowly heading to the side. side. <laughs> it's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Like, what is going on there? Um, <laughs> how are you, Amanda? I'm great. How are you? I'm fabulous. A little hungry, but whatever. <laughs> I know. I'm always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but today, well, I also am usually thirsty. And today we're talking about drinks. And one of my favorite drinks, which is wine. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm not going to lie. This is the thing. When you work in fitness, it's so funny because everybody suddenly thinks that you are like, I life. don't ever eat junk food. I don't drink. I don't do this. And like, in all reality, yes, there are some fitness professionals who are like that. But most people, you know what I mean? They still are real people who drink and eat junk food and balance it all. Well, try to balance it all. Yeah. Um, So what we're talking about today is about, can I still drink and lose weight? And I think this is such a great topic to cover because I think this is something that so many women question, right? They wonder, like, because they like to still have like a glass of wine with dinner or they like to have some drinks on the weekend or they like to go out for like jails after work or something. And they're like, okay, but is this derailing me completely? Like, is this the, is this the problem to why I'm not getting the results I'm looking for? Totally. And it's kind of like, it's not a yes or no question. <laughs> unfortunately, I know. Unfortunately. As I was going to say, unfortunately, it's a gray area because there's, like, there's no like, there's no definitive yes or no. Exactly. Like, and I wish that we could give you a specific answer. So we're going to talk through it, but first of all, like everybody is built completely different. And this is something that we always talk about on the podcast. It's like every single person, we each have a different reaction to things. We each have a different constitution. Some people can, you know, handle more alcohol. Some people can't, some people have the enzymes do it. Some people don't. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that kind of play into it. So we're going to kind of talk from like, I guess like broad strokes in a way. Yeah. Um, But first of all, I want to ask you, Amanda. So do you drink? Well, okay. So I have kind of a mixed answer to that. It's not a yes or no for me either. I do. I do like to have drinks. I just haven't really had any drinks in a long time because I was pregnant. So obviously I was not drinking. And then I was nursing for a year. So I wasn't drinking during that period because even though I know that you can nurse and still just like pump and dump or whatever, I just chose not to. So I haven't drank in years. And then I recently had some wine with some girlfriends when I was out, uh, out of town at a cottage and it was like, it tasted so delicious. (laughs) Which is always I'm always curious. I'm like, did it taste really good? Or were you suddenly like, ugh, sick? No, no, it tasted so good, like better than I ever remembered. And like one yeah, of my- I just remember when I first started drinking wine, I was like, like the first time I tasted it, I thought it tasted disgusting. And then now I love it. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't love some wines, like some of the like heavier wines, but like this, I don't know what it was. Like we were having champagne with dinner and then we were having wine after it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it tastes so good. And it's funny because even my friend that I was with, she was like, oh my gosh, you need to spend the night here tonight. Cause I, I was actually having to leave that night. I couldn't stay overnight. So I had to stop drinking wine. She's like, no, you have to stay. She's like, cause I could see how much you love this wine tonight. And I was like, like I just, do. Yeah. No, and I was like, ah, oh. I'm like, no, I gotta go. So, so I guess my answer is like, yes and no. Also though, and I know you know this, Laura, that I actually think I have an allergy to alcohol or something in the alcohol because I always get like really flush in the face and my heart yeah. races and I feel like I'm almost like having a heart attack for like the first couple of drinks. And so my solution when I was younger, which is totally not a solution I recommend was always to just get that out of the way fast. So I would always have a few shots so that <laughs> it was just like, I would surpass that feeling because it always made me feel kind of uh, like uncomfortable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's definitely not a solution I recommend one, but um, yeah, I mean, I do like to have drinks here and there, but also now that we are trying to have a second baby, I'm not really drinking because I don't know ever if I'm pregnant, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I I guess my answer right now is no, but before it was yes, yes for sure. And then now it's like kind of not really happening. That was a really long answer to a very simple question. (laughs) No, I like it. (laughs) 
Well, because I think we kind of start to we need to start off with like where we kind of are on our stance of alcohol, right? Like some people are totally like, I don't, don't drink. drink. Yeah, I don't. And they're against it. Um, they don't think it has any place in a healthy lifestyle. And then there's other people who are like, yes, I do drink. And then they also believe, you know, because a lot of the best diets in the world, like the Mediterranean diet, incorporates red wine. Yeah. And, and that's only been a part of their culture, but it's also been a part of their medicine for for years and years to come. I actually just when I was in Spain, I went to the wine museum and it was all about like the history of wine and how it's made. And um, it was showing like the Egyptians bringing it over and how they used to use it too for medicinal purposes. So like, right. there's those two to kind of different schools of thought, especially in the health world too. Like some people are like, no, you should not drink at all. And then some right. people are like, it's good for you and this and this. And so I like to kind of see where people are at on it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if anyone talked to us back in our twenties, they're like, <laughs> obviously you guys are booze hounds because we used to party a lot <laughs> yeah totally I, sh I should have been like I, I should have literally just been like a vodka ambassador when I was yeah, I'm surprised my liver isn't like pickled no but I know, <laughs> I know. but yeah anyway. no, things shift whatever <laughs> things shift okay so where we kind of stand at Fit Chicks on alcohol is that like yes you can still have it if you're trying to lose weight and there are ways that you can incorporate it in whether you're like whether you track macros and you're calorie counting um, or you are an intuitive eater and you're kind of like, okay, I, I still want to have some drinks mm -hmm. because when it comes to weight loss, the thing is there's a lot of factors that play into it. Right. And we talk about this in our holistic nutrition weight loss expert program. So yeah. weight loss is not just calories in calories out. There's a lot of other things that factor in to keep your body in balance, but calories do still matter. Right. So exactly. the first thing when it comes to alcohol is that you have to look at the type of booze that you're drinking because you're adding basically empty calories to your diet. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, so there's three, mac three macronutrients, okay? So they're carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. The reason why they're macronutrients, they're considered mac mac macronutrients is because they, have, number one, have calories, and number two, they're essential for us to survive. Now, there is a fourth Thing that has calories, but it's not considered a macronutrient, and that's that's alcohol. So alcohol right. actually has seven calories per gram. And the thing is, though, it's not considered a macronutrient, even though it has calories, because people say it's not essential for us to survive. Now, <laughs> I always tell our students, I'm like, that also could be up for debate after a crazy week, and you're like losing your mind, and that glass of wine is the only thing that's kind of keeping you going. <laughs> So that's the reason why when we call it empty calories, right? Yeah, because so, there's no because there's no nutritional value to it. It's just yeah. it's just calories that your body's taking in. It's, it's just energy, gonna, mm -hmm. and it's not going to feed your hunger. Like you're not going to feel full from it. Um, so what, when we're looking at weight loss, like of course calories in, calories out matter, and alcohol does have those calories, and they can yeah. add up really quickly. Especially like you were saying, if you're not drinking, like if you are drinking the, like, I call them like the sugar bombs, like the, the margaritas or the like, um, Long Island iced teas and like all this, I used to be a bartender guys. And so I know what goes into those drinks and like, it's crazy. Like those yeah. frozen slushy margaritas that you get at restaurants is literally like one ounce of alcohol or one and a half sometimes. And just, it's like, just um, comes out of like a carton, like a milk carton, and it's just frozen yeah. slushy sugar, and that's all. It's so sweet and so gross. That's why we have to dilute it. Like when we make it, we have to dilute it and dilute it and dilute it. Same with sangrias and stuff. Like if you're not making your own sangria or you're not very specific how the sangrias are made, like yeah. you have to make them at the restaurants, it was just like Sprite, orange juice, all these other juices and stuff. And I'm like, it's just sugar. It's like literally you're just and like so much, like so little wine. <laughs> so it's not worth it. Totally. And like, this is where, you know, a lot of times we think, cause we're drinking something like if you're drinking like a pina colada or something like creamy, you're kind of like, okay, I can see this being more calorie dense. But when you're drinking something like a sangria, it tastes you're like, oh, it's light. fruit. <laughs> yeah. And it tastes light and kind of fizzy. And you're like, this is delicious. You know what I mean? But then you're thinking when you actually think about what's in there, or mm -hmm. even like, I know a lot of people who drink like gin and tonic and yeah. they think, Oh, it's just clear, like it's you know, there's no no like, tonic is so bad. It's tonic just so is bad. essentially yeah, it's as sweet pretty much as if you're drinking Sprite or Coca Cola or whatever. Mm -hmm. So 
the main thing when it comes to alcohol and the calories is really looking at what type of drink you're drinking. Because like Amanda said, like the margaritas or now, you know, we've got all these funky cocktails that like all these bars are making. All the martinis off of the menus. Yeah. Or all these like smoked, you know, blueberry aperitif or whatever. Like there are all these fun (laughs) cocktails, but there's still a lot of them have simple syrup in them, which is just sugar um, and a ton of other stuff mixed in. So if you're trying to lose weight, the first thing though is like cut those out, right? Like yeah. if you're ha- if you want to have alcohol and still lose weight, it is possible. But first, you got to look at which ones are the calorie drinks and get rid of those. Mm-hmm. So things that you can you know essentially drink that are lower calorie would be like any of the clear liquids, and they're lower in carbohydrates too. So like vodka, gin, even even the darker ones like whiskey, um, like the hard spirits. Yeah, and then if you mix those with like soda water um there's a lot of water. soda water now mm-hmm. yeah like you obviously we want to stay away from all the artificial sweeteners but you can still if you are someone who once in a while you have like a diet pop then you know you could do a diet pop but i don't recommend that um <laughs> but yeah like something that's like you know or a dry white wine a dry red wine ones that aren't the sweeter they are the more sugar that there is in them mm-hmm. or something like champagne too is great um, well, I shouldn't say it's great, but it's a better option. <laughs> it's great. I love champagne. Doesn't <laughs> but that right away is like the first thing, because that's where most people, the issue with alcohol for most people is that they're not just drinking straight shots of vodka or vodka mixed with soda. They're drinking, you know, beer and drinks with lots of mixes and calories and extra sugar. Like a vodka orange juice or things like that, where they exactly. still feel like, oh, it's just juice, but juice is like, it's so it's just loaded with sugar. Unless yeah, or like a gin ginger ale, yeah. where like, again, they just think because it's not creamy or it's not, you know, but there's so much sugar in that. Mm-hmm. I so remember, that's... sorry, I, I'm just going to add a little story. Like I remember mm-hmm. back in the day, I, and I have no idea why I got into this weird kick <laughs> where I was drinking, um, oh my gosh, it was triple sec and cranberry juice. Like it was just like this weird, like little thing that I was drinking for like a day. What does triple sec even taste like now? Is it's it like, like orange? it's like an orangey kind of thing. Yeah. And I was, but I just decided like one night that that's like <laughs> something I was going to drink. And it was like so sweet, like it tastes like candy. And yeah, I literally guys from all of the sugar and everything, I got the worst migraine before I even got home that night. I still remember this because I was sitting in a cab and I was actually with um, an artist that I was helping them get back to their hotel. Like we were sharing, like I was taking a cab to drop them off and then go home. Okay. And I was sitting there with them and I was like head against the window, like, Oh my gosh. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I literally am hungover before I'm even hungover because my head hurts so much from all the sugar and like, yeah, it was just, it was nuts. Like, it's so crazy. Like how much sugar I was drinking in that one night, even though it tasted amazing at the time. But all I keep thinking about now is like, oh my God, like the amount of calories I probably had from the sugar. Cause sometimes it's like, you just got to think like sugar basically converts to like really high calorie. Like that's how I think about things now. It's like, if there's lots of sugar in it, it's definitely lots of sugar, uh, lots of calories, just like candy, you know? So I don't know. I just think you got to choose wisely. Cause that night was like, not only like bad for my waistline, but bad for like overall health. (laughs) Yeah. And like, it's so funny how it's easy to like, you know, I couldn't consume, you know, 20 glasses of water back to back to back to back, but I could probably drink 20 drinks back to back. And it's a lot easier too, to when it's sweet and it, you know, it tastes good. And then it's giving you a little fun feeling that you can just keep packing them back. And then your body's like, Whoa, sugar overload. Yeah. Um, yeah, so but you don't yeah, want to get so, to that point. <laughs> you no, know, and that's the first thing, right? So when you're, the if you're asking the question, can I still drink my wine and lose weight? Or can I still drink anything and lose weight? Yes, you can. But first of all, look for the drier, the drier wines. And wines mm-hmm. too, they're not as bad. Like when it comes to calories, it's about, I think it's about 100, and, 100 to 150 in a glass. And depending on, if it, like if it's a five ounce glass, I think it's about mm-hmm. 120 on the average. And then there's like about, three or four grams of carbohydrates but again the sweeter it gets so it's not you know as sugary as let's say the margaritas which probably have about 40 grams of sugar in them if uh, i mean probably more yeah (laughs) and i know for most women that's and myself included wine is my thing that like that's what i choose to usually drink wine champagne or i might drink vodka and soda so um 
if you want to stick with the wine, just try to stick with the, the lower, the drier wines or yeah. mix that in. If you are going to have some drinks, like for me, I made a rule this summer, actually. Um, this is actually my rule right now because I was getting to a place where I was drinking quite a lot of wine during the week. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this has become a bad habit. So I changed it that if I am going for drinks during the week, I can only have clear liquids. <laughs> And then if I want wine, it's on the weekends. And this way, because the thing is too, is I don't drink, I'm going out for drinks, like sitting down drinks. Yeah. I don't drink super fast if I'm drinking like a gin and, gin and soda. So that way it's like I'm drinking less and I sip it. And then it is lower, the lowest of the calories, lowest of the carbs. And then on the weekends, that's when I'll have my wine. <laughs> that's what's been working for me. Yeah. See, if it I'm works. I'm results from it, people. If it works, saying, then it works. One question I have though. I'm not saying it's the best strategy, but... <laughs> If you are someone who has to have a drink after work, if you want to avoid drinking the whole bottle of wine, maybe this is a different strategy to try. Well, and also even our friend Jackie, she was telling me how her mom, because she like, and again, everyone is different and you got it. You also have to be real where you're starting from. So if you're somebody who's accustomed to coming home from work and having three or four glasses of wine, which is like the average North American woman, like it's totally normal. You're not weird. You're not an alcoholic. Like but it becomes a habit, right? So my yeah. friend Jackie, her mom, she was gaining a lot of weight because of course this, this sugar and extra calories adds up, adds up. So for her, what she's done is she switched all of her wine to vodka and soda and she actually has lost 14 pounds. And that's the only thing that she shifted. That's the only thing that she shifted. Interesting. Because she was drinking so like, again, there was just so much extra sugar and then by cutting down, just making that one switch and then yeah. her next step is that she's gonna actually start cutting down the amount so I think even now she's not drinking as much, but you know what I mean? Like, don't be, don't beat yourself up if you can't just suddenly do it all at once and just, you're like, I'm going cold turkey and stop drinking. No, like just try to make small shifts and then to cut down some of the calories and then you can eventually wean out. Now, what about though, just outside of just the calories though, I've heard that, and maybe you know the answer, to this, I'm hoping you know the answer to this. I heard that your body, when you actually have alcohol in your body, it will not actually metabolize fat for like two days after. So it actually, it's almost like you put your well, results on pause. Yeah, there's a lot of mixed research on how long, because again, like I was saying at the very beginning, we're all, our constitutions are all totally different and we all mm -hmm. have a different amount of enzymes to clear alcohol. Right. So like you'll see, like typically women, we don't clear alcohol as quickly as men do. So that's why men can usually drink more than we, than we can. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, we all have seen people where we have our, a girlfriend who she's like two drinks and she's puking in the corner, whereas, or she's yeah. passed out. Whereas like there's some who are like me, I have a, like a liver of, I think I pickled it, like I said, in my twenties. If I am drinking, I can actually drink a lot and not be sick or not be hungover. Yeah. So, which I shouldn't even be telling you guys this little trick, but in nutrition school, we were talking about this. <laughs> But essentially, if you are some, if you're going out for a night of drinks, and um, the example that my teacher gave, who's a naturopath, is if you're getting married and you know you're going to be drinking and you don't want to be drunk and you want to remember your wedding, what she gives to the bride and groom as a gift is B vitamins, <laughs> oh. because B vitamins are act actually the cofactor um, in producing the enzymes alcohol dehydrogenase, which clears alcohol, so it will help clear alcohol quicker. Because okay. essentially what's happening is you're drinking alcohol and your liver is trying to clear it, right? And then once you're overloading and your liver is not clearing fast enough, that's when we start to get drunk. So the people who can drink a lot more, they're typically clearing faster. It doesn't mean they're healthier. It just means they might have more of that enzyme. And the right. people who are clearing quick, but slower, a lot of other things play into body fat, weight, height, all that stuff. But just kind of as a general thing. But yeah, so she gives people B vitamins or if she's going out for a night on the town or a night where she's like, oh my God, I've got to go to work tomorrow. I'm having drinks tonight. She takes extra B vitamins before she goes to bed. Interesting. And that's, when, that's actually what is, you know, those like little pills that you can buy called like the hangover pills? The hangover pills. pills. Yeah, yeah. And they market them for so expensive. Really what they are is like B vitamins. Oh, wow. I had no idea. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I wish I would have known that in my 20s. I know, seriously. Like, why didn't I go to nutrition school earlier? Yeah. Um, but what ends up happening is, so yeah, so it's like the clearing of it. So there's no set day or set amount of time. Like after two days, it's still in your body. But for some, it can be up to two days. It can be up to four days in terms of bloating. So, so yes, but when your body's actually working at clearing the alcohol, it, that's what it's focused on working at. And it won't necessarily be working at breaking down 
fat or anything like that. Like it won't, yeah. it won't be metabolizing fat because it's metabolizing this alcohol to get rid of it. Cause it's essentially like getting rid of the poison, like clearing it out of your system. Yeah. You have to think of it in the way of like the body prioritizes a, what it can use the easiest because like anything in life, we want to find the easiest route. Yeah. And also what is the most toxic to us. Right. right. So so the, when, when we're just eating normal food and we don't have alcohol, typically, of course, the body is going to burn our carbohydrates first because they turn to sugar in the body and it's the easiest thing for us to burn for fuel before they're going to burn fat. So that's right. why if we're constantly eating sugar, like carbohydrates all the time, and we never allow a long space or we never allow, um, or we, we never lower those carbohydrates, we always have insulin in the blood. And our body is always going to be burning those carbohydrates for fuel. We're not tapping into our stored fats. Right. So that's why you've got to reduce the carbohydrates to get into the fat. The fat cells open up and then those get converted into energy for the body. That's how our body actually burns fat. But if we even, let's say, are eating low carb and we are just eating, you know, just say we're on the keto diet or we're, we're reducing the amount of carbohydrates or let's say we haven't eaten for eight hours and we have alcohol no matter what, our body is not going to go into the process of using fat for fuel um, as efficiently. Let's say, well, it's not really going to go in there because the main thing, the metabolic priority is going to be to clear out that alcohol because it's a toxin. Right. So whether we've had carbohydrates, not had carbohydrates, had fats, not had fats, <laughs> if we have alcohol, the first thing our body is always, it's going to do, it's going to work on getting rid of that. So that is going to slow down our, our metabolism when it comes to fat burn. Right. Totally. So that's another thing that you got to consider, like, can I still drink and lose weight? Yes. We're playing the calories game, right? The calories in calories. Yeah. We want to still make sure we're counting those calories or considering those calories from the alcohol in our overall intake for the day. But we also have to consider like, if you want to really reach your goals, do you really want to slow down that process by having your body having to clear out all those shots of clear vodka? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And also into it also too. The main thing when it comes to booze, that's one thing, but the main thing I think is the calories. Also, that the alcohol is an appetite stimulant. We've all been there after drinking. Oh my God. You're like, I could eat a house. <laughs> I still remember having that confession I had with you one day. So guys, this is so embarrassing. And I'm going to tell you. So after, I love, I love sharing all my embarrassing stories lately. <laughs> um, I still remember. So when Laura and I lived together and we would go out and like go out drinking or whatever and go out party. Whenever we would get home after, at the end of the night, I would always have to eat those like McCain microwave pizzas. Do you remember yeah. that one? I was like obsessed with it. Like the that was like, one. yeah, just the little cheese pizzas. And I remember one night <laughs> going into your room and I was like, Laura, I have to tell you something. And you're like, what? And it was like, I was so serious. And I, I was drunk guys at the time, obviously. I was like, I didn't just eat two pizzas, I ate all four, I ate the whole box. And I was like, so, and I still remember this moment because I was so bothered by it. I was like, I ate the whole box of these. But like, literally, that's what happens. Like, you could just eat and eat and eat and eat. Oh, yeah. Eat and eat. Like, like, oh my I God. I want to tell a story about another, a friend of ours, too, who shall not be. <laughs> I'm not throwing, uh, I I'm, even probably, know. I'm probably I even throwing know. the friend stories in because. I don't want to share all of my embarrassing stories yet, or there's too many of them that I can think of. But I know exactly what story you're going to share too. This friend, <laughs> two things about her, which is hilarious, is number one. So we were at my mom's house, and my mom, of course, when you're at a mom's house, she has all this pre-made food and she's cooked batches of stuff. And so in the fridge, she had made like this delicious bean chili, and it was like ten bean chili, and it was like so good and. I don't know about you guys, but this is what's weird. When I'm, if I've been drinking or I'm hungover, I could either go the route of like, yes, I totally want to eat pizza. Or I could go the route if there's something like delicious, that's more healthy, but I could eat that like bean chili. So m this friend of mine, I ended up having a few too many drinks and I fell asleep. She ate, my mom had used a two liter tub of ice, ice cream, emptied out and cleaned. She reuses containers like that for freezer stuff. She ate the whole two liter container of ice cream, which was bean, <laughs> bean chili. Like, can you imagine how backed up, but it's like your stomach just opens up and you're like, beer, beer. <laughs> and then the other thing too, is that when she, when she's drinking, she eats things like pork, which she never does when she's not drinking. <laughs> Booze makes you do strange things. So the key does, is- Especially uh, when it comes to food, you'll just especially eat. Especially when it comes to food. 
I know. We've all been there where you're dipping, you're suddenly dipping pizza in like mayonnaise and you're like, oh my God, this ice cream with cereal on it is the best thing I've ever had in my life. And you're like, I haven't come up with these concoctions. Yeah, no, I've, I've been drunk before. And like Melissa, our friend, I'll name her. She fed me salami. I've never even eaten salami in my whole life. I ate it that night and I dipped it in mustard. I don't eat mustard. I did mustard. That was like, I was like, what? I woke up the next day. I'm like, what did I eat? I feel so sick. <laughs> but this is the thing, guys. And we're telling you these stories <laughs> because this is what alcohol does, right? It's an appetite stimulant. It makes you do crazy things. Not only, yeah. you know, bad life choices with men and women, but also bad, jo- bad food choices. So if you yeah. are suddenly doing all this, like, you just don't want to get to that point where if you are looking to lose weight, you still can drink, but don't get to that point where you're just like, you're suddenly in the cupboards and eating everything. And I was going to so, say, like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be completely drunk to make those decisions. I find like, okay. even after like, even after like one or two glasses of wine, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to eat this. Could there be was a study. Thing. I can't it's remember like, what it was. Yeah. And it was like, after even one glass of wine, a woman's inhibitions and not saying sexually or whatever, but just a woman's overall, yeah. overall in terms of these rules we set for ourselves, like, oh, the I'm not decision making. Yeah. yeah goes down by 50%, even mm-hmm. by after the first glass. Exactly. So, and it's almost like, because once you've kind of, you know, gone down that route, you're kind of like, eh, a lot of times we've all been there. It's like, screw it. I've had the drink. I might as well have the nachos. I might as well have the dessert. I might as well drink the whole bottle. You know what I mean? Like it's that all or nothing mentality. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, being aware and being just aware of kind of your reactions to food or booze. But I also think, I know for myself, so every January, I always go completely dry. Mm-hmm. So after the holidays, I've been doing this for years. And this last year, I found that that 30 days for me actually triggered some weird issues for me again, some like food issues. So I felt like I was putting too much strictness on myself. And I'm someone who, I've talked about this a lot in the podcast about my eating issues, my eating disorder in the past. So I know, I'm very aware of when suddenly I'm like, whoa, because I was feeling like I was you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I have to do this. I can't drink. I'm, so it was almost like, not that I wanted to binge drink or anything like that. I just think next time I'm going to do like, instead of considering it like a cleanse, I'm just going to kind of take, just take time and not put it as like 30 days. Cause I usually just don't drink for January. Yeah. So yeah. don't, yeah. Like try to incorporate it. Everyone talks about moderation, which I think is BS for most of us. What is moderation in all reality? Everyone has a different thing, but just if you're looking to lose weight, you just got to get real with yourself about how alcohol affects you. So like we're saying, Mm -hmm. it's going to take priority on the metabolic pathway. Secondly, it does still have calories. So you got to consider that in, um, actually I wanted to say before we jump off the one thing too, um, if someone tracks, so if they track their macros, so a lot of people track their macros on my fitness pal or track their calories, they always wonder like, how can I track alcohol? Because since alcohol yeah. is, like I said at the beginning, it does have calories. It's a macronutrient. But if you look into my fitness pal, there's no selection to figure out I wonder why. alcohol <laughs> calories, right? So then you're like, hey, how do I plug that in? So one way that, um, that I've done it, and there's a bunch of different ways, is I just typically consi- count it as carbohydrates. So what you would do is you would just calculate how many calories were in that drink and then divide it by four. Right. Um, and that will give you the amount because there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate that would give you how many carbs to take off. And that's a way you can kind of keep it in line with your goals. So you're not going over your caloric amount. Now question for you though. And this is just before we jump off, just speaking about tracking and diets and everything else. There are so many people that are doing like specific diets or like tracking their macros and then they still want to have alcohol. And I've seen it and I've heard people where they're like, okay, well, I'm just not going to eat in, in exchange, I'm going to drink alcohol. I've done it. <laughs> so, so no, no. Okay. So you've done it. So what do you, do you think that that's a good strategy though for what I like, actually think for is the- weight loss? Like, I guess, I guess yeah. from a caloric standpoint, it makes sense. Like the math makes sense, but from a strategy standpoint of like your health and your overall mm-hmm. wellness, is that a good idea? What I, what I personally think in my professional opinion is no, it's not a good idea. Because you don't want to be eating less, especially the days that you're drinking. So I try Mm -hmm. to tell like my clients and our students too, when they're looking at their client plans and they're looking at figuring out macros, don't look at it or calorie counting. Don't look at it just as a day, right? Like, cause a lot of people think, oh, I went over today or I went under today. And then there's, they think they failed or they succeeded. Right. Look at your week, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you add up, 
yeah, so just say you are doing 2,000 calories a day for seven days, that's 14,000 calories. So let's say the day that you decide that you're having drinks and you're tracking, then you go over by 500 calories. Because you don't want to be under eating the day you're drinking too, or you're going to get drunk really fast. Right? Yeah, and you're going to probably feel really sick too. Exactly. So I would keep your calories the same, if just say so you go 2,500. And then the next day, I would just go a little bit lower. You know what I mean? Like just cut out those extras on and you don't or cut out a little bit. I was going to say, I was going to say, maybe you cut out a little bit because you don't want to like, if all of a sudden you're like, Oh no, I have to cut out 1200 calories because of, to make up for yesterday. You try to do that one day. You're going to be starving. You're going to throw everything off out of whack anyway. So you may as well just like, it's kind of like the same strategy that we do with like, I follow with our, like our steps, like when I'm tracking steps and I try to do 10,000 steps a day. Some days I just don't get 10,000 steps in. So then yeah. I'll be like, okay, cool. As long as I get 70,000 steps throughout the exactly. week, I'm cool with it. So yeah. treat it the same strategy. And yeah. I love that way because I also think it takes away a lot of the pressure of being like, oh shit, I totally failed today. And now I'm going to blow the bank and be like, yeah. well, I'm going to eat all, drink two bottles of wine and eat all the food, right? Like it, it takes away that pressure because you're just like, mm-hmm. okay, whatever. I'll just factor it into the rest of the week. And mm-hmm. you, do, you still feel in a sense in control of making your choices. You know what I mean? Like, of course, because I used to be like that too. When I miss a workout, I'm like, Oh my God, I missed my workout today. You know, I'm not necessarily going to do two workouts the next day, but I might add on five minutes to my workout every day for five, for four days. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. to kind of make up for it. So it's getting out of that mindset that they're just like, you know, every 24 hours it ends. It's like, you're, it's fluid. Your body doesn't actually know when 24 hours ends and turns all those extra calories to fat. Right? Exactly. Like you still have that time and flexibility to make up for it. So as long as you're doing something that's proactive to counteract that, eventually it'll all even itself out. Yeah. And that's why we have to look at life as you have to look at it like a lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. You can't look at it as start and stop because really, you know, your bad decisions on Monday, if you keep making bad decisions, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yes, that's going to add up. But if you make a bad decision on Monday and you make great decisions for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, don't even worry about it. You know, like don't play that blame game on yourself because you yeah. can't, it will all come out in the wash. It's the continuous bad decisions that are when we are, run into problems. So that's why it is really a lifestyle. But that way, hopefully guys, this helped showing you how you can still have some drinks, not feel guilty about it and still lose weight. Just, you know, factoring it in, picking the lower caloric choices. And of course, remembering that you know, you can't be drinking every single day because your body is also going to clear that before it's going to go into fat burning mode. You know, get exactly. Rid of the exactly. Okay, guys, so we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for joining us today. So just if you want more information um, on us or to watch this interview, if you're listening to it, we have a video too, so you can see our, my side bun. <laughs> um, check us out at fitrixacademy.com. We also have some awesome certifications coming up. For those mm-hmm. who don't know, we, Amanda and I, well, under Fitness Academy, we actually certify women as fitness and nutrition coaches and help you guys build amazing businesses in this awesome field. So we have our fitness and nutrition expert program starting September 26. Mm-hmm. We also have our holistic nutrition weight loss expert starting on October 15th. So we have a huge mission this year. We want to certify a thousand women around the world because in turn that will then help build more health in their communities. And we're all about spreading our chick power and getting more spreading people, the healthy love and more people really involved in their health and what's going on in their bodies and making those and educating and making those great choices for other people. So check us out. And then again, if you guys have any questions or things you want us to talk about on the podcast, we want to make sure we're talking about things that help you guys or you care about. So email us at info at fitchicks.ca. We will add it to our Rasta of conversation. And other than that, have an amazing day. Bye everyone. Bye.